In problem F2-2, we're given two forces that act on a hook, and we're asked to determine the magnitude of the resultant force. So once again, since we're trying to find the resultant force of these two forces, we're going to be applying vector addition. And over here, let's call the 500 newton force F1 and the 200 newton force F2. So hence, FR equals F1 plus F2. And since they are forces, we're dealing with the addition of vectors. So let's add these two forces by using the triangle law. So here we have F2. Then from the head of that vector, we have F1. And now the resultant force, FR. And right here is going to be my horizontal reference, or the x-axis. And F2 is measured 30 degrees from that axis. And then F1 is at an angle of 40 degrees. Just like that. The next thing we can do now is call this interior angle theta. And so redrawing this triangle in order to find the value of theta. We have our 40 degrees there. And then its alternate angle which is also 40 degrees. And now the angle theta is going to be supplementary to that 40 degrees. So hence theta is equal to 180 minus the 40 degrees. Since the sum of theta and 40 degrees should be equal to 180 in the diagonal. So 180 minus 40 is 140 degrees. So theta is equal to 140 degrees. Now I'm just going to redraw the triangle once again. So that is 140 degrees. This is FR, 200 newtons, and the 500 newtons. And as you can see here, we know two lengths of this triangle and an angle. And so which rule can we apply to help us find FR? Since FR is across from the 140 degrees, we can go ahead and directly apply the cosine law to solve for the resultant force and so the rest should be fairly simple we just plug in our known values into the cosine law formula so putting this into the calculator we're going to get fr equals 665.7 newtons so that right there is the magnitude of the resultant force. And so just a quick recap of the steps to solve this problem. We started off by applying vector addition since we're asked to find the resultant force of two given forces. And an important thing to keep in mind once again is that forces are vectors. So whenever you're dealing with forces and need to find the resultant force, you should implement vector addition and vector addition can either be using the parallelogram law or the triangle law. And in this case, I use the triangle law since it makes the work a bit more simpler. Uh, but you can also go ahead and try this on your own using the parallelogram law and see if you get the same answer. And the trickiest part of solving this, these problems might be getting around with what you're given. So in this case, we're only given two angles and two forces. So we need to use a little bit of geometry like we did. But pretty much, you should always try forming the triangle first, getting the resultant force, seeing it visually, and then see where you can go from there. And it's also important to remember when to use the cosine law and when to use the sine law to help you find uh, the resultant force like we did here. In this case, we simply use the cosine law given the triangle we formed and the angle we found. However, some cases can be a little bit more complex. Like in the last video, I believe we implemented both the cosine law and the sine law. So if you haven't watched that video, I recommend you watch it. And so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you found this helpful.